Um, today we're going to be talking about how to hire your first virtual uh, virtual admin. This is one of the decisions I made for myself five years ago uh, when I read Tim Ferriss' uh, Four Hour Work Week book, where he talked about the concepts of hiring uh, people that work for uh, for you remotely and virtually uh, from all over the world who can basically run your business, who can help you automate your business. And I see a bunch of you guys coming in. Hey, Jana. Hi, Ryan. Hey, Jonathan. Uh, we guys are uh, welcome here. And feel free as I'm, uh, as I'm uh, talking, please engage with me, ask questions. Um, so yeah, so I got exposed to virtual admins um, from reading 4-Hour Workweek book by Tim Ferriss. If you haven't read that book, I highly recommend it. Um, it pretty much talked about how you can use these virtual admins, these VAs, to be able to help you run your uh, run your business remotely and be able to automate it. Um, so super, super leverageable and I'll explain exactly why it's leverageable. I just wanted to give you guys a preview of what's coming for tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be doing uh, five online tools to run your law firm remotely. Um, you know, I've been pretty much being able, be able to run my law firm completely remotely for the last five years uh, because of the situation we're in, we're kind of, we're, other law firms are kind of forced to run their law firm remotely. So I could tell you from five years of experience exactly how I was able to do it myself. And then Thursday, we'll be talking about how to get local clients, how to get more local clients, specifically local clients. And it's different how you do that versus like national campaigns or things like that. And then on Friday, we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about five Chrome extensions that you should, uh, you can that you can use to get more, to get more local clients. And I see a bunch of you guys coming in, Ross, Rogelio, how's it going guys? All right, so let's talk about it. So yesterday I asked a poll um, that do you guys, whether you guys use virtual admins for your law firm. There were 15 of you guys that said yes. Um, 15 of you guys also said no, but you would like to. Six said no. And then one said, one asked what are virtual admins. And then we also had one of our students, one of our legal funnel students from session one, Donovan Francis, who actually went through my course and one of the modules, I actually, I, 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 I talk in more detail about this. And he, uh, Donovan, one of our students, actually implemented what I'm about to teach uh, today. And he was able to hire his first virtual admin. And he made it, he said a quote, uh, he, he said, Donovan said, they're able to do the stuff that I suck at in half the time. <laughs> and that's very amazing, Donovan. Thanks, sir. That's like a perfectly way to, to sum it up. Is like the stuff that you suck at, you don't want to do. You'd be able to do it for much cheaper and uh for in half a time by uh, having other people do it. Hi, Mel Hi, Melanie and Stanley. Welcome, you guys. So amazing. So it looks like there's a lot of you guys, again, um, that are, there's about half of you guys that are, do use virtual admins, that, but there's other half that are, that would like to. Um, I wanted to explain why, first of all, why you want to hire uh, VAs and virtual admins. And the reason is you want to be able to run your law firm uh, without you being directly involved. Um, there's a f very famous book uh, called E-Myth Revisited. I, I highly recommend also this book is uh, also very life-changing, E-Myth Re uh, Revisited by Michael Gerber. Um, he has a very powerful quote and I have my notes here so you can see, you can see I'm gonna prepare for this. It says, um, he says, if your business depends on you, you don't own a business, you have a job and it's the worst job in the world because you're working for a lunatic, all right? So if you find yourself running your law firm and you're directly involved with every aspect of your law firm, you don't, you're not, you're not self-employed. <laughs> you're pretty much, you're employed and you're working for yourself. And as this, this, as, as this quote says, it's not the best job because you're pretty much working 24 seven around the clock, making sure that, um, you know, the entire operation is running. So, um, what the book teaches, E-Myth Revisited teaches is that you, be, you have to create systems to be able to get yourself out of uh, out of your uh, business so that you could work on your business. So there's three powerful lessons that the book teaches and I want to just uh, click Google, uh, go over those. The first lesson is, is bring a great lawyer does not mean you know how to run a law firm. So just because you're an amazing lawyer and, and I know there's a bunch of all you guys down here, you guys are amazing lawyers, but just because you're an amazing lawyer does not mean you're a great business person or you're a great entrepreneur. Um, and what I mean by that is, as a, as a lawyer, you're, you're probably good at the legal work. But what about running, 80% uh, of running your law firm is running it like a business. So you need to be able to create those systems in place, put those in place so that you're not directly involved with all those, uh, with every detail of your business. 80% um, of businesses fail. 
and it's probably usually because of this reason is because usually entrepreneurs when they start a business or a law firm they start off with you know doing some of the work and then over time it adds on and over time all of a sudden they get burned out because you have to do all the work so four out of five businesses fail because of this reason and the quote is if all you know is how to do legal work then your law firm is very likely to fail lesson number two you have to run your law firm as a franchise from day one okay lesson number two run your law firm as a franchise as day one and i remember when i read this uh, read this quote uh, about three four years ago I'm like, how can I run my law firm uh, as a franchise? And one of the concepts that it teaches is that you have to be able to systematize um, the, the how you run your business, uh, how you run your law firm. So that means the operations has to be very systematized. There has to be like a protocol set in place. Uh, let's just say when a, a lead comes in and says, "Hey, I'm interested in this service," what is the exact protocol that needs to be taking place? And it should not, it shouldn't be pers necessarily personalized. I know, yes, it's very important to make sure that your the people, your potential clients that are contacting you, they're talking to a live human being. But for the most part, a lot of that could be systematized, exactly what you say. For, for the most part, it should be uh, templatized and kind of um, things that you say over and over. So um, you do this by systematizing and removing and replacing yourself as much as possible. And you wanna build a business based on systems and not people. Um, so that this will make sure that every client has the same experience and it will make your law firm results reliable and predictable. And the key principle is don't work in your business, work on your, uh, on your business. And the way that I was able to do this, and I'll teach you guys how to do this and in actually inside the course is I'll help you guys create templates and sequences for different parts of your law firm. So that if somebody, uh, somebody contacts you and says, Hey, I need this thing. You don't have to necessarily sit there and type out exactly what that is every single time. You'll be able to create templates and sequences so that you'll be able to systemize, systematically let them know exactly um, what that is and you'll be able to automatically follow up with them as well. Lesson number three is build a system so that your law firm doesn't rely on people's skills. So ask yourself, if I, if I wasn't working today, how would my law firm run without me? Very, very powerful question. Again, if I wasn't working today, how would my law firm run without me? And then what you need to do is you will need to create those exact systems that would run your law firm without you. Okay. I know this sounds all, these are all principles and I'm starting off with usually with principles because principles don't change. Um, and then I usually take these principles and I apply, um, I apply and I give the techniques inside my program and I'll, I'll try to give some of those techniques today too. Hi Joseph. Hi Bethany. And hi Josh. Welcome guys. All right. So let's talk about, what are virtual admins? Um, I, I call I call them VAs. VAs, they're VAs for short. VAs are freelancers that work around the world uh, for every t possible task you could think of. Okay, every possible th task you think of, there's a VA for. And this is actually, it's super leverageable. And let me tell you why. It's leverageable because when it comes to having productivity to getting something done. You, if you leverage the power of specialization, um, having people who are exceptional at one particular thing and you give them those tasks, they're way better at completing those tasks than a generalist doing it. And usually you're the generalist. You're, you're just somebody who knows you know, how to do it. But if you hand over those tasks to somebody who's a specialist who can do that task over and over, they'll, be, they'll, they'll have a, a bit, lot better, they'll be a lot more effective at getting that job done. And this is actually one of the uh, secrets that the Bible teaches us um, in the Torah. If you're Jewish, I've read this basically is it, there's a there's a part of the Bible where I believe it's Isaac who's he's giving blessings to his 12 sons or um, yeah, uh, uh, Jacob. Jacob is giving uh, blessings to his 12 sons. And obviously there's 12 people and everybody's different. And for every single blessing that he gives, he gives a very specific uh, blessing towards that son. So let's say for one person, he's like, oh, you're a great hunter. Go be, a, be an amazing hunter. Oh, you're, this person is, is very, uh, you're hospitable. You know, you're going to be an amazing, like hospitable person. So everybody's different. Everybody has those, those strengths. And it's one of the secrets of, of the Bible is you want to give those tasks, uh, those tasks that people are exceptional at and they're specialists at. And the more that you do that over and over, the more likely that you're, the, the, the quality and the high ROI you have on those tasks. So think of your freelancers and these VAs as specialists. Um, 
and what is what's been, been been going on and what's the general trend with VAs? So uh, VAs have been around for a while, but I, it, there's definitely, um, especially at a time like this, they're a lot, they're very leverageable because these are people around the world where in these other countries, uh, the wages are much, much lower than other states, uh, than other countries. Um, so let's just say if, in, if an average income is 15 or 18 bucks an hour and in the United States, in other countries, it's usually five to $10 an hour. And that's super leverageable. Um, and then also the second part is there's a huge supply of these VAs around the world. Since there's your market uh, of these VAs are, is around the world, there's, there's a huge uh, supply for them, but not as much demand, which brings down the cost even more. And what I can tell you is that hiring VAs to run my law firm has been one of the most leverageable, if not the most leverageable um, actions that I've taken for myself. And I really hope that you'll be able to do the same. Uh, a common question that I get asked, <laughs> Josh, hey, what's up? Peach Rabbit, I love it. Um, a common question I get is what kind of tasks can you delegate to a VA? And I actually have a full list that I give to my students. Um, so let me just give you some of them. The one that I use the, the most is answering my, uh, answering my emails. I'm able to, again, I use these tools, the, these online tools that I have um, that I teach inside my program to be able to create templates and sequences for different parts of my operations. And then I train and I delegate my VAs to be able to answer most 95% uh, of my emails. So emails, answering emails, billing, taking care of billing, calendar management. For that, I usually use Calendly, um, calling clients if necessary, calling courts and jails, uh, creating client folders. I use that for every time the client comes in. As soon as they become a client, they basically, they send a welcome email, they send them an intake. Uh, and then once, they, uh, once, once my clients fill out an intake, then my VAs are able to go back and forth, clarify some answers, make sure that the answers are correct, and then they take those answers and do the filings. They could also do correspondence, um, creating updating client contacts, creating forms, data entry, uh, doc document conversions, creating PDFs, uh, managing leads, paying invoices, sending invoices, um, answering phone calls, sending intakes, sending e-facts, transcriptions, anything you could possibly think of, um, you can have VAs do. So usually when you start off, I would say just think of one task, something that you hate doing, and just hand that off. And that's what I do actually, that's what I teach inside my program and I have my students come up with three, three tasks that they would like to hire a VA for. And then I go through exactly how to do that. So let's go through it. So how can you hire your first VA? By the way, I just wanted to say hi, hey, Imran, Elizabeth, Steve, Dina, welcome guys. So let's talk about how to hire your first VA. Um, there is a bunch of websites that you can hire uh, VAs. Um, the one that I recommend is Upwork, upwork.com. Uh, I've been using Upwork for five years now. It's great because of many reasons. One is, is it makes you, and yeah, feel free to ask your questions. What about ordering medical records, Joseph? Yes, you could definitely do that. And hi, Elena. Um, yes, anything you could possibly think of, any task you could possibly think of. Uh, but usually I would say just start off with one and over time you'll just find things to hand off. Um, so how to do it? Again, I use Upwork, upwork.com. It's great because it lets you do the entire, from putting up the job post um, to you know uh, looking through people who submit their uh, responses to the job post, uh, be able to qualify those people and messaging them, communicating with them. Um, and also, you could also use Upwork to hire them and then also use Upwork to continuously manage them. Um, what Upwork does is that it also takes screenshots of their screen um, so that your workers, when the VAs, when they log in, they they just pretty much just clock in, um, and then Upwork automatically takes screenshots of their screen and also records their activity on their computer to make sure that they're working. Um, so that way you don't have to worry about, hey, are they working or not? I never had an issue. I think there's only been a handful of times, I would say like three or four times, where sometimes I had VAs who were doing things outside of work. It's okay. For the most part, 99% of the time, VAs do what they're supposed to be doing because they don't want to, pretty much they don't want to risk it. And I'm also, I teach how to find the best VAs so that you won't have that issue anyways. So you basically want to put up a job post on Upwork. Um, and then you want to make sure that you hire, hire them on, on an hourly basis. And, and then the, here's the important part is that you want to pick very specific specifications of the people that, that, that can apply to the job. And you want to, uh, and you want to be as, as picky as possible. So what I do is I usually just, since that's again, since there's so much supply of these, of these VAs, 
you want to put um, in your job post, you want to say, um, only show this job post or only have people who have $10,000 or more um, that have, for people that have used Upwork um, and earned $10,000 or more using Upwork, only allow those people to submit to the to my job post. And also give a spec another specification is that they need to have a 90% job success rate. That way I'm only getting the best of the best. Again, I'm able to do this now because just there's, there's so much of the supply of these VAs. So I'm able to be very picky. The project length, I usually say more than six months. And then I, was, I also ask for intermediate level experience. Um, I do have a, another secret sauce that I add in there. Very, very important, but I, I'm gonna keep that one, that secret for my legal funnel students. It's very leverageable. And it's also very, I just wanna share, you know, I wanna give away as much value to you guys, but also wanna share a lot of the extra amazing stuff for my legal funnel students. Uh, so when, when I put up the job post, next thing you wanna do is you wanna, very important to invite um, invite people, invite VAs to your job post. And the more you do that, the more that you kind of create um, engagement and you create more activity in your job post, the more likely that will be reach more people. So right away after you put up a job post, make sure to invite more people. And then after that, people will apply. Um, usually um, Upwork has a little uh, dashboard where you're able to pretty much thumbs up or thumbs down people. Um, I basically usually thumbs up a couple of people. And then from that point on, I usually have like three or four people that I've narrowed it down to. I usually, again, based on how much they charge, uh, based on how much they've earned on Upwork and also their job success rate, which is basically their reviews. Um, based on those three factors, I'm able to uh, narrow it down. And then from that point on, um, I hire two VAs. I always hire two VAs at a time. I never hire one VA, always two, very important. Um, and again, by the way, why am I, how do I, um, how do I know <laughs> what I'm, what I'm sharing with you? Um, I could also tell you that I've hired 64 VAs on Upwork. That's how I, I pretty much, I was able to figure out this systems and also have hired about 50 more on other websites. So that's the reason why everything that I'm sharing with you guys is, is there for a very specific reason. Um, so just follow it to the T. Um, so hire two VAs, um, give them a very similar task, give both of them a task and give them a due date. Very important for every task, uh, every time you delegate anything, you always need a due date. You can't just say, hey, do it. Say, I need this done. This is exactly done by this date. Usually I give them about 24 hours or 48 hours. Um, I usually use Loom to record the video and give them instructions. Um, and I usually, what I do is I, one, once I hire them in Upwork, I, t I message them. I message them and say, hey, message me on Skype so I could provide you the instructions. And I give them the instructions and then I basically am putting both of them, it's, it, I'm putting them against each other and see who does it the best and who can do it faster. Um, and then based on that, I'll be able to hire one of them after one week. So again, I'm running a test, I'm hiring two VAs and running a test to see who does it the best. And then after the, uh, after the first week, I'll see who does it the best and then terminate the, the, the bad one and then keep the one for ongoing basis. And then at that point, once I see that they're, gonna be with me for some time, then I invite them to my Slack, okay? Um, at that point, again, for ongoing work, I want them in my Slack, and then now that, that's when I incorporate them to my entire system, and I give them a very ongoing task. I tell them, okay, this is the task, I want you to do this every time. Let's just say one ex uh, perfect example is, um, anytime this email is labeled this, then do this task, okay? That's usually what it is. It's usually um, in my emails, and I actually teach this inside my program, is I'm able to, um, automatically label certain emails depending on what the emails say and where the emails are coming from. Um, and those are the different parts either of part of uh, different emails that were, were uh, my prospects are asking for my service or people, uh, my clients who need, who I'm hel helping them do, uh, do whatever the service is. So I basically give this VA is, hey, you're in charge of this label. Whenever, this, whenever an, email comes, uh, an email comes into and it's labeled this email, do this, okay? And then again, very, very important is to make sure that you only hire specialists. Very, very important. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys got value from that. Just to summarize again, um, you, wanna, you don't wanna work in your business, you wanna work on your business. And the way you do that is by delegating out as much as possible. Um, these VAs, by the way, I forgot to mention why it's so leverageable is because um, these VAs are usually $5 an hour. Um, sometimes even as low as four dollars an hour, and that's okay. I know you may, seem, you may think like that's not fair. Um, actually, in other countries, 
that's a good wage. Uh, Five dollars an hour in their country is the same as let's just say fifteen dollars an hour. So um, they're still okay with that. I'm okay with that. You know, they're happy. I'm happy. Um, but yeah, on average, actually, I looked it up this morning. I paid five dollars and thirty cents for my VAs. Um, and yeah, super leverageable. Again, if if you have, or if you already have a law firm, something that's already making money, and then you plug the, you plug your VAs into your system, that those actions uh, that you get them to do is super super leverageable. Um, I kind of had this realization also about um, two years ago um, or three years ago when I basically hired my first four VAs. And then at the end of the year, I did a report um, of um, these, the VAs that I hired, exactly how, how many hours that they worked and how much I paid them for the entire year. And I found certain VAs that um, were, I basically paid them, let's say about a thousand dollars. And then I basically realized that this particular one VA that I hired for a thousand dollars for the entire year was, I was able to leverage his time um, to make a hundred thousand dollars just based on his, his results. So once I realized that, I realized it was a very high leverageable act. And then I basically went on a hiring spree to hire as many VAs as possible. And at this point, I just hire, 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 hire. It doesn't matter what it's for. Because again, there's a huge um, margin of error. Even if they're wasting time or whatever, it's still, if you plug into your system, they'll still be able to uh, help you make money. So super leverageable. Uh, Benjamin, welcome. Iman, welcome, guys. So uh, E-Myth Revisited, if you haven't read it. Um, you guys should read it. E Myth Revisited to you how to run your law firm, uh, how to run on your business, uh, how to work on your business and not inside your business. We talked about three powerful lessons is that being a great lawyer does not mean you know how to run a law firm. Lesson number two, running your law firm, as uh, you should run your law firm as a franchise from day one. So running your law firm as if like you don't exist in your business. So you want to uh, pretty much delegate as much as possible. And then lesson number three is build the system so that your law firm doesn't rely on people skills. Okay. You just use technology and people to run your law firm for you. This helps you out. Again, this is one of the components of automating your law firm. This is how I'm able to completely be out of my law firms and I'm not directly involved at all. I haven't done one client work in the past year and I still get about uh, five to seven clients a day um, with all these automations. And then um, the tasks that you can automate and delegate again, your email inbox, your client intake process, your operations, uh, marketing tasks, um, very specific marketing tasks. Um, I could go into that later uh, inside my program, but and then legal tasks, you could also delegate out. And then also gave, uh, there's a list of uh, tasks that you can delegate out to your VAs. Usually again, answering emails, billing, uh, calendar management, data entry, all the stuff. And then I explained exactly how to use Upwork to that correctly. All right, let me guys know if you guys have any questions. Hi, Debrina, Iman, and Rachel, welcome. Let me guys know if you have any questions. I'll try to stick around for a little bit if you guys have any questions. Um, I, I encourage, uh, uh, for all my students, I make them um, hire their VA, their first VA if they haven't. And I, I focus in on an entire module on this. Um, if you haven't, super leverageable. Hire your first VA on Upwork, upwork.com. Um, they're the best at, you know, putting up a, sure, Elena. And I'm, uh, Elena, I'm glad you're part of the program. Actually, I'll go into more detail inside our program and actually give you guys, uh, you guys will follow along with the worksheet that you, so that you guys will actually go and do it. But I'm glad you joined. Um, yeah, it, super leverageable. Uh, Tim Ferriss is booked for our work week. If you guys haven't read it, read it. e myth I think those two books that came out of this, those are like the two b uh, best books on pretty much understanding these concepts and applying it. Um, other things I could share with you guys, um, there, there are also some, some concerns. I always get some questions about from, uh, from my students about, do you, is it safe to share your passwords uh, with your VAs? Um, you, use, you can use LastPass to share your passwords um, and without them seeing your passwords. So you can just use LastPass to share your passwords. Uh, passwords. And then um, also, I'm, I'm not afraid to give them access to my PayPal and Stripe. Stripe has uh, specific um, user accesses. Um, I, I believe it's called analyst user access so that they're not able to make any changes to my Stripe account. And then same thing with PayPal. With PayPal, obviously, they're, they're, they're aware that, you know, if, if people try to, if people log in and try to do something, so they usually don't allow um, people to, 
um, to add another bank account to a PayPal account. Let's just say if one of your VAs goes in and wants to transfer money to his own bank account, they're not able to just add their bank account um, to your account without you know put, directly putting in the passwords. So just use LastPass to be able to give access to different tools, um, and it works out great. Uh, concerns that usually I get, I get a lot of hold back from lawyers who like, who like kind of refuse to do this. Like they, they usually bring up objections. Well, I don't trust them. Well, what if, what if they don't do a great job? All those things I could tell you are just limiting beliefs that you have. Um, it's, it, it's super leverageable. I've, I've been kind of preaching and talking about this for many years. Um, super leverageable. The sooner that you guys implement this, the better. Let me guys know, I'm going to see if, uh, if there were any questions that came up. Uh, Stanley asked uh, Upwork people giving bids on the pro on the jobs. Um, no, for whenever I'm hiring on on Upwork, um, our, uh, try to hire on an hourly basis. If there was like a very specific tasks, then you could give them like on a flat rate basis. Um, but for the most part, I usually I want to have a VA for ongoing work, so I just hire them on an hourly basis. Again, usually about five dollars an hour, and that's the way I want to do it. Because again, what if I'm done with the task? What I, usually what I do is. I, um, I kind of have, uh, I hired these VAs and I, it's kind of like they're in my inventory. As in time I need anything also besides the ongoing task, I could also message them and say, Hey, just take it, uh, take care of it so that you want to make sure that they're hired and they're already onboarded into your Upwork account. So you could just give them the task and, and, and get it done. One other question that I came up also is what if these VAs work in non U S time, right? Is that a, is that a question that you guys probably have? What if they work in non-US time? Um, what I've learned is that that's a good thing, actually. It's a good thing. And let me tell you why. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, Elena. Uh, the first one, Elena, is called E-Myth e -myth Revisited. Uh, E-Myth Revisited. And it's by Michael Gerber. And then the second book is Tim Ferriss, 4-Hour Workweek. I uh, highly recommend both books. It will kind of shift your uh, mentality about how you're, how you're run your law firm. Um, yeah, so talking about um, having these VAs working in non-US time, it's actually a good thing and I like it because I'm able to, during the day, I'm able to focus on my work and do whatever I need to do. And then I usually use Zoom, uh, Loom to record instructions and I hand over those instructions and then I send it to them. And then when I wake up in the morning, the task is done. And that's great. Um, I, I don't want to be distracted by VAs and uh, VAs ask me questions. I just want the work to be done. Um, so by, by being able to actually work in different time zones, it's actually a good thing. You know, um, if, there's a, if there's a need to, uh, for you to ha ha have a VA to work in, in US time, you could hire a VA in the US or you could hire an international VA that can work in U, uh, US time. You can and you actually put this in your job post. Hey, I need a VA from this country that could work um, in US time. That's totally fine. No problem, Elena. Uh, Imran, thank you for posting that. Uh, yeah, you may revisit a small business. Yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you for Imran for posting that. Um, Ada asks, um, do you have to hire them to get info from them? on what they've worked on in the past? Is there an interview process? Great question, Zada. Uh, no, you do not need to hire them to get info from them um, on what they worked on in the past. Um, all VAs, uh, all the um, people on, on Upwork have a profile that shows how many hours they've worked on, on, on Upwork. It shows how much they've earned and what their job success rate is, which is basically the review system. Those three, three, three things. And it also shows you actual reviews from past, uh, from their past uh, clients, people that they hired them in the past. It shows them a lot of people, uh, most of those reviews are just stars, but sometimes the, the reviews also have comments. Um, so yes, you'll be able to, again, when I went through the, the protocol of how to put up that job post, you wanna make sure that you're hiring people who have $10,000 worked and a 90% success rate. That way you get the best of the best. And just based on that, that's like good enough. If they have, like I said, 15 hours of work and Upwork and have a 95% success rate, then I just assume that they're great. Um, so that's that. And then is there an interview process? Uh, no, I used to, I used to interview them. Um, but if you qualify them, but again, based on their profile, because of that high success rate, then they're pretty much, you just expect that they're good. And then all I do with my interview process is just put into the test. It's just better than interviewing them. If you have time, if you can do it, sure. Great. 
you know, talk to see if you can get them on a on a Zoom or on Skype and talk to them. That's totally okay if you want to. But for me, because I'm trying to get things done really fast, I just give two VAs a certain task and see who does it, who gets it done fastest and who does it uh, who gets it done the best. And then, and then after one week, I cut off one of them and then I continue on with the best one. So that's the way I, I kind of interview them. Hi, hey, Joseph. All right. So let me guys know if you guys have any questions. I'm going to scroll up to see if there's any other uh, questions you guys have. Um, nice. Benji, thanks for your good comments. Stanley, what's up? Russ. So good to see familiar names. Lior, if you're here. Um, and yes, is Ada asks, is pay done through pay, uh, Upwork? Yes, that's actually one of the amazing things about Upwork is that it, it takes care of all that for you as well. Um, Upwork just is, is hooked up to your either your credit card or your bank account. And for me, it's I think it's a lower fee if it's hooked up to your bank account. And then automatically Upwork um, captures how many hours that they worked and every week um, pays them automatically. And uh, And all you can do is you could just review you can actually review the work if you're like really like if you want to be hands on and see what work they've done. You can actually go into their, you could log in and into your dashboard and and look at their screenshots. Upwork takes a screenshot of their of their work and there also records their activity level. So they'll just say, um, yeah, it just takes a screenshot and it also shows their activity level, how much they're been they're working, how much they're using their keyboard and mouse, and you'll to see if they're they're doing their job. Um, but yeah, and then the 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 payment is also done through Upwork. There's no t uh, there's no tax reports anything that that, that needs to be uh, provided from Upwork because Up Upwork is I believe there it's a 1099k I believe I want to say um, where it, there's these companies that manage these freelancers and they they have direct they basically from what I understand they give all their accountings directly to the IRS so that you don't have to report it they the IRS automatically knows uh, I believe that's I think that's how it's done. But and so they're, that's how the payment is done. Joseph, you're very welcome, uh, guys. So tomorrow, by the way, um, we're gonna be talking about five online tools to run your law firm remotely. And the reason, um, the reason why I'm doing this is, by the way, to add value to you guys. Um, and two, uh, we're actually also closing up Legal Funnel session two. You guys may have seen all the amazing members, amazing uh, uh, students that have in recently enrolled. And um, basically, what I do is I teach. Um, lawyers, how to uh, get more legal clients online and how to automate their law firm. Um, it's a six week, six module program. It's it's done through a live coaching um, where six weeks I get on and basically I get on a Zoom and I teach um, s through six modules, basically how to get clients online and also things about this, how to run your law firm remotely and, uh, and um, uh, in an automated basis. Um, I teach those. It's again, life coaching enrollment. Uh, we're starting actually next Tuesday enrollment for session two is ending next Monday. So if you're interested, please, uh, just, uh, let me know or go to, uh, legalfunnel.com, um, or legalfunnel.com slash video. There'll be a little short video on the left side and then there'll be an application. If you're interested, fill out the application and then we'll, you'll have, you'll be able to either talk to Kalinda or Ash. Um, all of our students who have already enrolled, they have, they have gone through this protocol. They went through legalfunnel.com. They watched the video, they fill out the application. They talked to Kalinda and Ash. Uh, after talking to them, we, uh, Kalinda and Ash are able to see whether we can help you, um, and whether you'll be good for our program. If you are, we offer you the program again, six weeks, six modules. Um, we already had our, we already finished our first session. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had 20 satisfied, uh, happy uh, students. You'll be able to see their reviews on legalfunnel.com slash video. Um, and then we have already have 11 students enrolled for session two. Probably two more are gonna be enrolled today that we're waiting uh, to, we're waiting on them to make the finish, making the payments. So we should only have seven more spots left. So if you're serious about this, um, definitely um, sign up. Again, this week is the last week of enrollment before we start off session two. Um, Imran asks, do you provide them as a procedure manual or Loom video on how to do a task? Yes, I use, if I have to give them a very specific task, I use Loom. And actually I have an onboarding protocol for, for VAs that I have, that I hire on an ongoing basis, I give them an onboarding protocol. And it's like a very thorough um, protocol that any, anytime I hire anybody, I give them, uh, instead of me individually uh, training them on all my tasks and everything, 
I pretty much send them to this one document that explains them to exactly tells them what to what to what things they should install. Here, go review these, watch these videos, all these things. Uh, I give that unboarding protocol. I give it a sample of my unboarding protocol to my students in some of my course. Actually, I, didn't, I forgot to talk about this. Very very useful, so that I don't have to sit there and 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 onboard and train every single VA that I bring on. I just I just the first thing I do once I know they're with me for an ongoing basis, I just give them access to my onboarding protocol. It's about like six or seven pages. It pretty much has everything. My entire law firm, everything is there. Here here here's the protocols. Here's the videos, instructions. Here's everything. Here's who you should talk to, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Everything is there. Uh, no problem, Ada. I'm glad you guys are getting value from this. I'm gonna take a nice little screenshot. Uh, Michelle, welcome. Ada, you're very welcome. Um, and then, yeah, Imran, I hope that answered your question. Let me know if that didn't. Michelle, welcome. Yeah, let me guys know. So um, tomorrow I'll be talking about five online tools to run your law firm remotely. I want to keep this short, so I don't want to take too long. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care, guys.